it's hard enough when you're at school in the workplace and you can turn and ask someone for support let alone when you're going to be on your own at home it's very much pushed us to really make progress and headway with that use of, of tech uh, in the classroom. We have to, for the benefit of our children, make sure that like we're pushing things as far and as fast forward as we can. We didn't want to let our students down. When lockdown started, it was very much, so how do we actually move forward and continue to provide the learning for our pupils. It was really important to us to know how many children didn't have access to the internet and didn't have access to a device at home. We actually did a questionnaire of which students had devices readily available to them and which students had internet access. It was then thinking about how do we make our teaching and our resources available to all learners. And then that laid the foundation for March 20th onwards, all lessons to go online. The benefit that we have seen through being prepared, has been exceptional. One of the things that we discovered when we first went into lockdown was the need to rethink the way that we were delivering staff training. So we started to offer some online webinars and we had a huge influx of those teachers that were attending our training sessions. We use a variety of Google tools to help us deliver um, our distance learning and also to deliver teaching learning when we're in school. Google Sites has been sort of our big tool that we've used during distance learning. What we've seen Google Sites deliver are our virtual learning sites, our online learning sites. Really quick, nice looking sites and anyone can get on and make them. It's really easy because you can drag and drop material in. So that's where we've put all of our recorded lessons for them to access all of their resources as well. Google Drive and Docs and Sheets enabled staff across multiple sites to collaborate on the same document at the same time. And that was really important to us because previously to G Suite, we didn't have a mechanism for that. It enabled us to reduce teacher workload. So suddenly staff could, could work together on the same document, use some automation in the background for lots of our processes. And that was less time that uh, our staff had to do manual processes and the, the system just did it for them. The Google technology that helped us the most when we shifted to completely remote learning was Google Meet. Students would log on, click on their calendar and be launched straight into their Google Meet. Google Meet allowed us to actually still be a community and still work together and actually being able to just go, hold on, let's get together and people realising they're not on their own. It was an elegant, streamlined, simple tool that all of our staff and all of our students could pick up very quickly with one link, one click. One of the big things uh, that really supported us was the use of Jamboard because teachers needed a way to be able to model their lessons and then record through Google Meet so that the pupils could still see them as they deliver those lessons. Google Classroom has been fantastic for us. It's built over the years into a product that is really powerful in terms of assessment and rubrics, uh, feedback. It's the app, the space where all their assignments, all their coursework is assessed where our students go to to actually find out what's happening for the lessons that day, to find out what's happening with any extracurricular activities, any work experience opportunities. It is the sort of one-stop shop whereby all their teaching and learning is catered for. I think one of our successes has been enabling children to be flexible and to enable them to choose the tool that they want to use to present their learning. They've had to be creative. They've had to problem solve. They've had to think on their feet. We were lucky we were able to get some Chromebooks out to some, you know, some of our children who really needed them. But lots of our children perhaps have other devices at home um, and they can still join in. And that cross device access was really at the, the kind of core of our strategy. We've got children that um, historically every piece of writing would have been done in an exercise book. But now we've got them using a wide variety of tools and they're able to select the tool that they'd like to use that best fulfills the outcome of what they're trying to achieve. Having them decide what tool they want to use can be really favourable and, and leads to a lot of goodwill from our students, particularly when they create some of the work they've been submitting, which is so personal, so rich and so authentic. I've been really impressed with all of our workforce and how they've really embraced this approach to remote teaching and learning. Ultimately, our teachers are the ones that know what works for their class. So it's thinking, okay, 
how can you improve what you're already doing? How can you enhance it, make it more exciting just by making a small change? There'll be things that go wrong. That is just how it is. But what's most important, I think, is that you don't give up. And then as those things happen, you share them so that you can both learn from um, what happened and, and share it with others who can maybe learn. Whilst children have told us that they miss lots of aspects of school, for example, not seeing their teacher or not seeing um, their friends. They've also made it really clear to us that actually they really enjoyed this new style of teaching and they want this to continue. They are loving these lessons. And, you know, quote one of my children yesterday said, this is the best lesson I've ever had. So the challenge for us going forward will be, how do we maintain this great use of technology while, while also uh, using the traditional styles of teaching that we know uh, also work in the classroom? The bit that can be flipped and done digitally, remotely, that will continue and we've already started to do that and we are well equipped to carry on doing that. It's the live element of the teaching and learning, I think that's going to become really exciting actually because it's going to have the high, is, um, higher stakes to it. In a sense it becomes more essential than it's ever been. I'd say my biggest tip is start small don't feel like you have to try everything, but just try one thing and get it going. Get the ball rolling and start to make progress on the use of technology to support your learners. Focus on what you want your teaching and learning to look like and don't worry necessarily so much about minor operational details uh, because they often get ironed out very quickly. Don't wait. Get it ready. What's the worst that's going to happen? You may not need it. Let's hope we don't. But actually, I think you'll find that when you get it ready, you're never going to want to not use it. One thing you can be sure of is that there's new tech coming and it's not always easy to know what that is. But what's important is when it arrives, we um, you know, review it, make sure it's safe, uh, adopt it and then train and share with it. We just need to ensure that every child, no matter of their ability or background, is able to learn. And the digital learning platform that we've been able to provide them, there's no words to really measure that. It's been fantastic.